Hi, thanks for joining. It's Thursday and welcome to my video chat. I'm so glad that I get to come on every week and speak with you and I thank you for joining and catching the replays and leaving me comments and notes. It really is nice to know that these messages are getting out there and uh, helping people, so I appreciate that. So it's, um, it's spring in Texas, and so we had the threat of a hailstorm last night, and it was quite funny watching everybody get prepared, and so people did crazy things to protect their cars from putting bags of mulch on top of their cars and bubble wrap and tarps and all kinds of crazy stuff. People were moving their cars. And it was so funny because the game, the weather game that we played last night tricked us all and there was no hail. It totally bypassed our town. So, um, you know, people were forecasting, going home early, all this crazy stuff. And it reminds me kind of this week I've been talking about diabetes and ownership and this game that we play with diabetes. And it made me think that, you know, diabetes is much like the weather. We think we have it. And then it throws us some monkey wrench and, you know, it just doesn't play the way we want. So that can be very frustrating. And, you know, I've been there um, so many times, especially early on where I thought I had it figured out and then it changed the rules without even me understanding the rules changed. What I thought I did right turned out to be wrong. And you can, it's very easy to get down on yourself. So easy to do that. Makes me almost get a lump in my throat just thinking about it. But, um, what I have found is, you know, there's only a few ways to really beat the game of diabetes. And one of the ways is you cheat, right? You cheat like crazy whenever you can. And so if the game of diabetes is about winning, right, and getting perfect blood sugars, I choose not to play that game. The game I choose to play is persistence. So I always play. I check my blood sugars. I do what I can. I react. I roll. I expect for it to, to have variability. And in that regard, I always win. Um, because, you know, if you're forced to play a game you know you can't win, you're not going to play it for a long time. You know, if somebody told me I had to start running and run marathons, I would just be beside myself, I wouldn't want to do it. Um, and it would be very hard for me to get motivated and do that sort of work. But when you find some benefit for yourself or some desire in yourself to do something, it's much easier to stay with it. So when you have a situation you can't win, one of the things you can do to cheat is to change the rules. So diabetes may um, want to throw things in a, in a, you know, into chaos, but we can choose to play it differently, right? We can choose to acknowledge when it's off and when it's kind of acting funny, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and when we do that, there's one word that really em empowers and embodies ownership with diabetes, and that word is choice. So diabetes may, it may feel like it takes a lot of choices away from you, and it does, it absolutely does. But when you can choose to do things differently or do things on terms you agree to, it empowers you and takes you out of victim mode and that feels so much better. So sometimes we do things on autopilot and we don't really notice it, but when we choose to take a different approach, a different strategy, a different way of thinking about things, it's helpful. And that puts us in the driver's seat. So. Being in the driver's seat has now become a medical phenomenon that's really starting to take root, and it's called person-centered care. So my schooling and expertise and all my years of clinical practice did not involve person-centered care at all. Um, most of the medical training was all about the doctor and the medical system knew, and people were not well-prepared or well-equipped. And so we had to tell them what to do, and then they had to go figure it out. But we were the keepers of knowledge, and they were the patients, you know, were, were subservient. They were down below. Well, person-centered care changes that model and that paradigm, and it says you are the one who knows what happens to you 24-7, second by second, minute by minute. You're the only person who knows all the different things and influences that factor into your diabetes, um, how it comes out, how it plays out and you're the only one that knows how you feel so you're the best in the best position to negotiate your care um, get information from many different sources you know you absolutely need to seek your um, see your providers and your diabetes educators and those experts right we need to tap into those people but we at the end of the day we only see them very short times in their office the rest of the time we have to figure it out on our own and so we are really the person making the choices and doing that. So it's very, um, 
encouraging for me to see this concept of person-centered care. And we see it much more, I would think, in the nurse practitioner realm and family practice realm and in holistic realms, more so than we see it in acute care or inpatient hospital settings. And that makes sense because when you're inpatient, you're very, very sick right? And so you need somebody to be the expert when you can't be. But when you're out on your own and you're doing your stuff day by day, the more control and the more influence that you have over every decision that you make every day, the more empowered you're going to be and the less victimized you're going to be. And in that aspect, you get to choose the game that you're willing to play. So I think that's it. Even I'll make one more analogy just about baseball. So if you think about a baseball player, every time they get up to bat, they don't hit a home run every time, right? They get up and they look for the great, the best um, pitch and they swing when they can and hopefully they have a good outcome. And I have that same philosophy about diabetes. I always get up to bat, I always do my best, but it's not always a home run. So for me, the, the goal isn't to hit a home run every time, it's just to play the game. And so in that aspect, because I get up and I swing every time, um, I win, even though I really couldn't do that in baseball. I'm a horrible hand-eye coordination person. Mm -hmm. So anything, um, I'll wrap up by saying ownership happens when you choose, when you make choices. So keep that in mind. Um, on a announcement note, so a couple things. One, um, I'm finishing up my webinar series. So I am, I've been in the midst of a five-part five webinar series called Dealing With Your Diabetes. And it's all about the five pillars that I coach on. Um, next week, it's about voice and, you know, how do we communicate and how do you get the things you want to say out so that people hear you because it's very important to communicate and be heard. So that's next Wednesday at noon um, and you can register on my website. So we've rebranded the website too, just if you haven't caught that piece. So it's dealingwithyourdiabetes.com. Um, Dragonfly Lights is still my parent company, but the products that I'm doing right now for diabetes are dealingwithyourdiabetes.com. Um, and so even if you missed the first four parts, Feel free to register because everyone who registers will get access to a web page, and that web page is going to have all five of the webinars, all five of the downloads. And so the downloads consist of some self assessment tools. Um, I've got some documents that you can download, my ebook, a lot of stuff, a lot of information that you can have access to. And you can go back and rewatch them or share them with other people. So please, um, if you haven't registered, feel free to do so and we'll send you the links to that and try to join me live next Wednesday. That is all I have for this video chat. Um, please let me know if you have some topics you would like me to cover. I'm always thinking of something, but I would love to answer any questions that you all might have. So um, send me an email or put a comment in the link below and have a happy Easter. Remember there's no carbs in Easter eggs. Yay. So um, eat the chicken kind, not the chocolate kind. Anyway, have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye.